enjoy the present. Because the truth is coming. Well, this is this is unique because you and me are watching X Files for the first time all the way through, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, to people that have already seen the series and seen the movies and stuff, we, we finally finished season five, and now it's time for the X Files movie. So, is this a video for? Um, so, is this a video for just the X Files movie or X Files? seasons one to five we should just talk about the x-files movie but we can talk a little bit about the x-files show so far well for intro going into the movie what do you think of the show so far first five seasons um as far as the one seasons one through five go i enjoy the show quite a bit i think that there's a lot of boring bad episodes and i think now which which episodes are these boring bad episodes there's a lot of them but which ones do they tend to be? Are they like random episodes or do, is there like a trend that you notice among the bad episodes? I think the problem is, is that you look for the monster of the week and oftentimes the monster is not that interesting. Yeah. And and not only is it not interesting, but then they take it at an angle that's very bureaucratic almost. And when you do that over and over again, it just becomes like, all right. We just want the Winchesters to come in here and shoot well, everything with their shotguns. Especially also because they have these bigger storylines that they never touch on until Chris Carter comes back and touches on them. Mm-hmm. So overall, I, I like the show. And everything that I like about the show, I think, then was like perfectly squeezed into the movie to where we just got the good parts of the show in the movie. My quick thing about the show is... I love the one-off episodes that are good, which are a good portion of them. And then I hate the ones that you said. All of the ones that kind of tail off and don't leave you really fulfilled tend to be the ones I think that are about the main plot of the alien colonization conspiracy. We'll call it the ACC. I don't like those episodes. And that's a lot of uh, the most recent season, season five, and that's a lot of the movie. So I guess that's a good segue as any to kind of get into the movie. Yeah. It answers a lot of stuff, but you're still left unfulfilled. That's my two sentences on it. The, the point is, is that there are a bunch of different conspiracies. All, all around aliens. All around aliens and government in- interference with aliens. Yeah. So much so that, but, but, but the only And this movie is about one of them. Yeah. The, so, so you only need to know about one of them. And the one of them is, is that there's this black goo that... Uh, gets put into people and they like die or something crazy happens where's the black goo come from the movie tells us it's alien blood the show never does so before even going to the movie we know about this this black goo that they put into people um they have these warehouses where they're like tying people to medical tables um like naked it's in russia in russia and they're dripping the black goo on them and Mulder eventually gets taken by these people and he gets the black goo put on him and i honestly don't even remember how he survives that i think it gets negated by crycheck sure but the, what the movie then also goes on to explain is that there's a vaccine for this. So we're to let believe, potentially, unless they said in that episode that Well, Mulder did got... Krychek create the vaccine by saving Mulder? That's the thing is, like, I feel like the show in general, and this is the show, not the movie, but I feel like the show really downplays big moments. Yeah. I think with this movie, too, like, it does a good job of setting up what the goo is, and also there's a vaccine to it, and while also being a continuation of the show. So if you've never seen the show, I think you would understand what's going on with, like, the goo. But, from, but you wouldn't understand the stakes or why it matters. Sure, but from for us, like even that's not a fulfilling. That feels like they just tag that on to clean things up. Whatever. The point is, is that this movie is going to be focusing on the goo conspiracy. <laughs> so the black goo is like it's kind of like blood plus sperm, right? It's not even blood. It's an organism. It's a living organism that goes into your body and then uses. You but as we saw a the host. caveman fight an alien. Yeah, and then that, but that or, but it's made of organisms. It's not. That's not its blood. That's just its being. It looks like blood. It looks like blood, but it moves like an organism. So what is it like? Puppet these alien bodies? It's like some Prometheus shit. Yeah. Well, what they introduced in this movie is that aliens were here way before the dinosaurs. They were like in the center of the earth. When the cavemen show up, they uh, fought one of these aliens and they killed it. But then the black goo got into the caveman. But then we cut to then present day where a little boy uh, falls into the pit, like into the ground, and he finds the bones of the caveman. And then there's still, still some alien goo left over. Then that gets into the boy. And, well, it thaws. Yeah, it thaws. Right. It was frozen, and now and then it thaws, and then it attacks. Yeah. They are hosting bodies, and the government is trying to 
I guess maintain. Yeah, where's the government con- figure into this? Well, they're trying to control it or maintain it, and then still use it as a way of doing a mass, like you know, infection with a disease. Why? You know, control all the stuff that those old white uh, bad guys in suits like to do. They like to get together in rooms. They like to watch a little TV, and they like to talk in shadows. No one. It's ever such on a light. boring shadow government. Like, I, I just think, what was that cartoon that was on Netflix that we watched? Well, it's literally a shadow government because they never turn any lights on in any of those yeah, rooms. Yeah, it's always dark. It's always the same old white guys. What was that show we watched on Netflix? Inside Job? Inside Job, yeah. That's how you, like, write about a cabal of, like, you know, evil people trying to control the world. Yeah. These fucking X-Files guys are milk toast. And then that's the thing about the movie is that you find out that they're not really like proactive. They're just reacting to the alien colonization. But at least that gives them something. Like the show always tries to make them scary. And at least with this movie, uh, there was a little bit of a flaw. And <clears throat> just like to kind of scale it back a bit, because we can then like get into the... Like, you haven't even talked about Mulder and Scully yet. I know, we can get in depth of the plot. But just in general, like I like this movie. I thought it was a good movie. <laughs> I enjoyed it, and it's because of the introductions of the alien in the beginning with the cavemen, then kind of seeing it to present day. And then it's a continuation of Scully and Mulder um, being just FBI agents, kind of like, you know, they're looking, they're there for a bomb. There's a bomb about to go They're off. in like the anti-terrorism unit now. Yeah, and they're just like, they're just doing their jobs, and, you know, she's giving us some exposition, Scully, if you will. Well, I just climbed up 12 floors. I'm hot. I'm thirsty. And to be honest, I'm wondering what I'm doing up here. You're looking for a bomb. Yes, I know that. They've closed the X-Files. There's procedure to be followed now, protocol. But in general, like their dynamic throughout the whole movie uh, was just really, I just enjoyed it. So I, I, I don't really have any problems with the movie. Um, I think it actually took all the good ele- the best elements of the show and found ways to make them more interesting. That's the thing is like, to me, all of the best elements of the show are the one-off, not alien conspiracy, not they're shutting down the X-Files. And because all of that stuff was happening at the end of season five, and now we're doing a movie about it, it's a very glossy culmination of everything that I don't like about the movie. But don't I'm you, sorry, that I don't like about the show. But don't you think they did a good job just within the movie of taking those elements and actually making them interesting? That's the thing. In- I, I say they polish it. Okay. But it's like, I don't care about the alien goo. Like the fact that they introduced it a year and a half ago. When, when's that Mulder Krychek Russia episode? Like, like that, that felt like so long ago and we've been watching the show pretty like consistently. Yeah. So it's like, why are they just now answering that now? Well, I, I just think in general, I'm being a little easier on the movie because every person that's going to see this movie isn't going to have maybe watched all of the show. Maybe they've only seen a couple episodes. So this movie has to like set up but stuff. But that's why it needs to be more so of like a one-off. No. Than an than alien conspiracy episode. I disagree. And, and We've seen every episode. We've seen every alien conspiracy episode. And we're still confused. I think that this movie is very similar in execution to that of Serenity. For Ooh, example. Because, that's a bold claim. Because Serenity has to set up a lot of stuff. It also has to continue the bigger plots, the bigger points of the plot of that storyline. And then it also has to be its kind of own adventure. And I, I think... I, I just think that they do a decent job of that in this. Like the opening scenes before we even get to Scullier and Mulder, they're not like bad scenes. And the movie's like it's directed well. So by the time we finally got to Scully and Mulder, like, yeah, I mean, they probably could have had those two beats be a little shorter. But like I said, they're not, they're well executed scenes. So they, they help the movie. Why are we with Mulder and Scully? Like, what are they investigating at the beginning of the movie? Well, they're just FBI agents now. So there's just like a call of a bomb threat and a, a bomb being in a building. And they're just FBI agents that are just there to handle it. Well, that's so. my question is, does that come back at all? Well, it's the reason why they're there is for that reason. But what they end up discovering or finding out with the bomb going off is that there were bodies already in there. So it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, the X-Files are over, but there's still stuff going on. And because of these characters and who they are, they can't help but to investigate it. And not only that... That very investigation is going to be what clears their name because they get blamed for the bombing. They don't get so, blamed for the bombing. They get like... Well, they get blamed for the, the bodies that ended up being in the building after yeah. the explosion. So everything's just very clean. It kind of leads into the next thing. And it all kind of uh, it works for me. You want to know what's clean? The episode Humbug. You want to watch X-Files, you watch that episode. I like the Vince Gilligan uh, vampire episode. That one's good too. Yeah. And then just to lead into that, like, then just Scully and Mulder's, like, relationship, how they kind of touch on a little bit of the romance and how much they actually 
need and care for each other. They don't touch on it. They tease it. Well, they tease it, but it's also just paid off a little bit better because... Do you think they would have hooked up? <laughs> if she didn't get stung if by she didn't that get bee. stung by that bee. <laughs> I, you know what? There's more episodes to this show and there's more... You have fan fiction that you want people to, he- to read. I understand. There are more movies and reboots uh, to this series and I don't want to touch on any spoilers for what's to come. But yeah, I would have liked to see them you know, share a little kiss, but I like the way that they did it where they were going to, but then she gets stung. Do they do the bees in a different episode or is that new? those bees that carry the plague i feel like they've maybe touched on it in a different way before but i can't be sure there's so many episodes i know one more thing i just want to talk about with scully and Mulder is that putting them in this position where the x-files have just been closed there is no reason for them to be partners anymore she's thinking about if she even wants to be an agent if she just wants to go back to being a doctor it puts them from the beginning of, of the movie in a tough position because they could separate their relationship is is tested from the beginning of the, of the movie all the way throughout to where when they're in the snow at the end and they're like holding each other and he like saves her i just felt like it was all set up and earned and it paid off well like it, they have a very good dynamic in this movie and it makes you kind of want to watch the show i think it kind of like restrengthened the whole series for me this movie I uh, yeah I was fading away from the show and it it did boost me a little bit but it's still there's just so much of the alien conspiracy but it's directed the ACC. well yeah I have a question Scully's um faith based arc is absent from the movie you think that was on purpose I don't know if that was something that they ever really I think they only leaned into that because they needed episodes to fill I think the main like adversity in the show is like science versus um oh science versus the supernatural yeah but isn't faith just like structured supernatural faith is a version of the supernatural in a sense so that's why they touch on it in the episodes of the show but with the movie the only the whole reason and she kind of says this like in the movie because we got to reintroduce all these characters very quickly is like i was only here to dispute you the movie is almost like a repilot because there's like that the banter they do at the very beginning banter i'm doing air quotes yeah it's just like exposition for like their whole reason for being together but they do the same thing in serenity with the opening shot yeah but it's less it's less obvious I think it's just as obvious, to be honest. And and you have to do it with these movies, but it just it's how you execute it, right? And this show was always very like talk heavy to begin with. When you direct it well and um the writing gets a little bit better too, like Is it directed well? I think so. I think there's a lot of like really good shots. Like I think of that shot with the kids on the bike. It's like the super wide and then you have Scully and Mulder across from them and like there's like clouds in the background and stuff. But it looks good. It's a good shot. Plus there's a lot of really good transitions. And there was that one transition you pointed out where the road's going one way and then the road goes the other way. And then the X-Files sting kicks in and it's an X. You should should show that footage right now. I'm probably showing it right now. It's an X. I, I paused it during that. I was surprised. And there's also that really interesting uh, field scene with like the helicopters and like with the beehive or what, what do you call that? Like It's like a bee warehouse. It's a place where they store bees. <laughs> it's like these big tents. Uh, the, uh, there's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. Well, I just think like on paper, a lot of these things would seem kind of boring. It's like, okay, they're going to go to a cornfield. Well, that makes sense because on screen they kind of transfer as boring too. I don't think so. I think they do a really good job of taking kind of simple things in this movie and then balancing it out with extreme things like an alien ship, but shooting the simple things just as intimidating and scary. And they're uh, when they're like running away from like the bees, like when all the things open up and they're running out, like I kind of laughed. I was like, this is kind of silly. It's just bees. But it was shot well. And I, I was invested in the story at that point, so... I was confused because I'm like, was someone operating the thing to release the beast at that moment? Or was it just time for them to come out? Maybe it was just time for them to come out, you know? There's a lot of that. There's a lot of just me thinking, well, maybe this happens just to explain inconsistencies in the plot. Well, the silliest thing about that is that a bee just hides underneath her jacket. Do they, yeah, do they explain why the bees are, have the disease in them? Is that just how the government's going to transfer it? Yeah, that's how they're going to do the widespread of the disease through bees. What is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! The, these fucking cabal people, like, they're so they're <laughs> so boring in the show, and then they're so incompetent in the movie. I really hope they don't come back in, like, season six, because 
they're so just irredeemable as bad guys. Um, can we talk about uh, Alvin Kurtzwell? He's the he's a conspiracy guy. That he's essentially the new Deep Throat. Um, that's here to talk to Mulder uh into you know investigating something and that's the thing that like x-files always does is like they, there's always they, a, a leaker well they they had the original deep throat and then he got killed mm-hmm. and then there was a new guy that was helping Mulder, and then he got killed and then there was a lady and then she also died <laughs> so now we got a new guy and what they do is they say that this is an old friend of his father's and that he's kind of disgraced and he's kind of like a crazy person that talks about conspiracies and you know the shadow people say oh no one believes that guy anyway we don't have to worry about that guy (laughs) but Mulder has like four conversations with him and they're all all in alleyways and the introduction to this the first time he talks to him is right after molder has been drinking at the bar but then he goes to the alleyway he uh takes a piss on an independence day uh poster and then the old guy comes out and he's like i gotta tell you something and then like, he unzips his pants <laughs> and then he goes to the wall <laughs> he starts peeing next to molder and he's like telling him about he's not peeing next to him he starts peeing after molder's <laughs> yeah. done but molder just keeps standing there it's like a power move i think um i really wish that every time then when they talked in the alleyway after the fact he, he would only talk to him if they were peeing on the wall again together it's every time he starts dumping exposition he just goes and like starts draining the lizard yeah you come out here for a reason yeah i did but this guy is really just here to like just get more. he's a new character he's too. a new character he's really weird and he's he just, just dies well yeah he just dies i mean he kind of brings Mulder into the plot or helps like because he's the one that tells them about the bodies or about how to check like make sure that because like those bodies were probably dead before the explosion went off or whatever um but then they that's the up- thing is Mulder. there's no you can't call x files or even this especially this movie a mystery because there's no deduction being done there's more of a mystery during the Sherlock episodes of TNG than there is during any X-Files episode or this movie because there is no deduction. It is just a leaker giving information to Mulder and then Mulder being surprised by it and reacting to it. What what helps that though is the stakes within the actual characters because i agree that that like execution of like them being reactive to it is like yeah that's a little like lazy like tv show stuff but what helps it is that the stakes actually matter for them because they are in trouble with the fbi they're going to be blamed for the bodies that were in this building anyway so the fact that they are getting this information they react i mean how they get the information i agree is a little weak because it's just an old creepy guy with his dick in his hand in the alleyway literally literally but it doesn't lessen the actual stakes for the characters and, and the, Scully in particular about how she wants to leave and then what kind of keeps bringing her back in. They're just, they're, they're good layers to why each of them should be invested and then why we are invested as well. Why does it matter that they're blamed for the bodies in the building? Cause they were the agents on the scene. I mean, Mulder was the, he was the one that found the, the bomb. task force. Wasn't even looking in the right building. They found the bomb on accident because of like a happy accident. So why then are they pissed off that they, got the whole building evacuated sans four people i agree that it's not fair to scully and Mulder, but that's what that's why Mulder's so upset too so that's why <laughs> like if you were in the movie with them and you were like why are they even blaming us Mulder would be like i know right <laughs> but you know i think um i think skinner is the one he's like well, they gotta blame somebody <laughs> yeah <laughs> he literally says that you know how it is you know how it is he's a you and i both know that if it looks bad it's bad for the fbi blame has to be assigned somewhere and you know the one thing that kind of stinks is that skinner doesn't really get to have that much fun in this skinner movie. sucks in this movie well he the one fun thing he does is that he helps smolder escape the hospital with the three science guys the three the lone gunman yeah he pretends to, like be on the phone and lets like Mulder escape oh <laughs> Mulder gets shot in this movie by the way that's what i'm that's what yeah. i was going to so before, well the reason why he even has to escape the hospital is from this really good sequence where um scully goes to Mulder. she's like i'm out i'm done like i just did my my test this is the second time she's saying this during the movie well the first time they didn't they were kind of like she was already thinking about retiring but then this whole thing came up um and then they investigated a little bit um and then some weird stuff happened so now she's like I'm and really, then she says i'm out for real i'm out for real this time and then Mulder gives a great speech about how much he needs her in his life and they're about to kiss what's the setting for this is this like in the apartment hallway it's in the hallway yeah what a great place for a scene like this listen most breakups happen outside of an apartment okay and they're about this to, is not a breakup this is a breakup she is gonna leave him and he is desperate at this point because he actually believes that but they're not even leave. outside the building they're outside in the hallway 
he knows that she's about to leave and he's going to do everything he can to keep her to stay. He's desperate at this point. And he like tells her about how much he needs her and how like much she makes him better um, and how she doesn't owe him anything. And they're going to go to kiss. She gets stung by the bee and she like collapses or whatever. Um, he calls the ambulance. He goes outside. They put her in the ambulance. But then when he goes to the driver's seat, it's it's like the... The sh- Shadow Society. Yeah, it's the Shadow Society like bodyguard. Or and whatever. they explain it like the call got intercepted. Yeah, and he... he sh- well, I think the actual ambulance shows up after he gets shot when he's on the ground. I don't remember like, that. Like the real one shows up a couple <clears throat> minutes later. When they didn't kiss, I kind of tuned out. <laughs> Because I knew they weren't going <laughs> to for the see, rest that, of the that's movie. That's my point. Is like That's a great sequence in the movie. I like it a lot. You don't. Well, I'll agree that the sequence is well shot. Well, either way... You I'm know, not going to sit here and say Rob Bowman's a bad director. I'm just going to sit here and say Chris Carter's a bad writer. But but the fact that they got to even make a movie of this show... like It could have been so much worse. And I think when we watch the second movie, when we get to that point, maybe that's an example of that. But I just feel like it had everything going against it with this movie and for the most part i think they stuck the landing like i mean it's only got a 67 percent on rotten tomatoes I that would, is lower than i thought honestly yeah i would give it maybe like a 70 something not... i personally would give it like a 20 but i thought critics would oh, have given it like on. a 70 you would not give this movie a 20 percent. get out of your ass for once in your life like dude it's it's not like everything about it is horrible it's just that i really don't like where he jumps off with the premise but I, I i really think that they should but have you're taken doing that from the show this movie has to stand alone on its own as well too it can't just be that's a the thing is i think it should have stood more on its own i think it should have been more of like they're off the x files now but something happens and it's not alien related and they have to figure out what's going on i'll give it to you this way like that like i don't think it should have connected back to the grand acc conspiracy i think it should have connected back to something small like remember when they bring back the uh empath guy or the pusher guy who can like make people do stuff yeah they should have done something like that they should have brought back a really famous villain or done a more kind of twilight zone idea but you could make the same argument for firefly and serenity being that the most fun episodes of that show don't even have anything to do with the alliance or even have anything to do with the reavers but then when they did the movie, it was all about the Alliance and the Reavers. Yeah. And if you watch Serenity for the first time without ever seeing the show, no matter if that movie's still fun because of performances, you have no idea what's going on in that movie if you don't have any context for the show. Literally. It is so confusing. And they have to not only set up those characters, but also set up the rules of the world and what's going on, and then go off on their own adventure. Same thing with X-Files. If you never watch the show, but you watch this movie, I think this movie would be way more digestible because it's less crazy stuff. It's a pretty much simple premise of science fiction, government conspiracy, and rogue agent that's going to expose the truth. I'll tell you what, people who haven't seen the show probably enjoy the movie more because the alien colonization conspiracy is new. We've been dealing with this since day one for five years. But just because you're so 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 to an extent, the movie just seems like more of the same. There's like like I'm gonna guess. 20 or 30 episodes which means like roughly 20 or 30 hours of content around this alien colonization conspiracy we've got 15 movies worth of content with this idea and now this movie the x-files fight for the future is just more of that the only exception is now they're honestly answering some of the questions like what is the black alien goo but even that they're not really answering completely they're just like giving hints for me it's all about the payoff you gotta get that kiss. No, because the music has to swell. But their relationship was never about that. It was more about like a loving connection, and the fact that they were gonna take it romantic when they're at their most desperate is a representation of their character. It tells us something about them. And by the time where he escapes the hospital and saves her, and like you know, bangs her out of that goo, and she's holding him on the ice, even though. I thought she was more hurt than he was at that point. Well, that's the thing is he saw a UFO, so he fainted because he was so excited. Yeah, I'm just saying. But it's like, it's... By the time they're they're there, I enjoyed it. And then they have that scene on the bench afterwards where now he's all upset and then she's got to bring him back around. And then they have... Uh, I was way tuned out by that point. I don't remember no, that. It was great. And, you know, they have, a, they have one really good setup and payoff with their character just in the way they joke with each other where Scully pretends that the door's locked. And Mulder kind of freaks out on the roof. And she's like, almost had you. And then later, she's like, potentially dead. He brings her back to life. And then she goes like, like you know, I almost had you. And I'm like, that's nice. Um, but yeah, they have the scene at the bench on the end where, you know, 
we're gonna we're gonna continue this together and she takes him by the hand like when when you have that scene in the hallway where he's grabbing her telling her not to leave and at the end of the movie she's telling him not to leave like that's all that's all development that's all growth we're starting one place ending somewhere else it sounds like you're praising this movie for being passable yes they're making a movie based off of a tv show like come on you know what i mean and for the most part they did a good job like there's a lot of movies off of tv shows that aren't good Here's what I'll tell you. It had a budget of $66 million. Nice. And it had a box office of $189.2 million. That's pretty solid. Pretty solid. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely recommend this movie to people if they haven't seen it. But then again, this came out in 1998 and X-Files has been over for a while. So, But I enjoyed it. I liked it. You probably not so much. It's unfortunate because I'm comparing it a lot to... um tng right now just because it's from a similar time period those movies that were... are garbage no those i'm not TNG not the movies the show i know but even that's a gr- perfect example of what we're talking about those movies suck and it's based off of a tv show and they got it completely wrong this one at least not only to say totally true to the show but then cleaned up things that were bad about the show and then they continue did continuation i'll stuff. say that x files movie is better than the tng movies but i'm looking at right. i'm looking at the ips from the perspective of the show so, like, X-Files is very much a show where I feel like you can just pick and choose the episodes you want to see, and a lot of them can just be the one-offs, I disagree. and you'll be completely <clears throat> fine. Either way, you know, I wanted to talk about it, because uh, I think it's, like, a movie that not a lot of people talk about. But, sure. But, you know, it's interesting. I liked it. You not so much. You come out here for a reason? Yeah, I did. <laughs> 